All right, I got a good one for you guys today, especially if you ever come across one of those weird oddball runability, drivability, tunability issues with a side draft carburetor, more specifically, a constant velocity, a CV style carburetor. And at the end of this video, I have the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Something that'll drive you out of your mind unless you know what you're looking for. So first, let's just talk about side draft carburetors in general, because you find them in every conceivable application. You know, weed whackers, lawn tractors, scooters, motorcycles, any place where you can mount a carburetor to the side of an engine, you'll find a side draft carburetor. And regardless of their configuration, they're all set up pretty much exactly the same. They have the inlet on one side, well, the inlet on one side, the outlet on the other facing the engine. They all have the float bowl at the bottom, and the bowl is off of this one, but the circuitry in them is all pretty much the same. You've got a pilot jet, you've got a main jet, you've got the floats and the needle and seat, all of that's gonna be the same. Outwardly, all side draft carburetors pretty much look the same, but they're broken into two different styles. You've got slide valve and you've got constant velocity. Now the slide valve, the difference between the two, the slide valve is much more like, let's say, a downdraft style carburetor in that throttle position has direct effect, mechanical effect, on how much fuel the engine is going to see, right? The throttle opening equals fuel flow. That's it. There's no variation to it. Now, from a visual perspective, to tell the difference real quick, a CV style carburetor, constant velocity, will always have a smooth domed top. Whereas a slide valve carburetor will have like a tower with the throttle cable coming out the center of it, or it'll have some sort of linkage that will actuate the slide valve inside. Now the slide valve in a slide valve carburetor and the slide valve in a constant velocity carburetor, again, pretty much look the same, but they serve different functions, different purposes. So the slide valve carburetor is not really variable and it's not very sensitive. It's also not the most efficient way to meter fuel. Whereas the constant velocity cell carburetor, and these are more popular and you're gonna find them on more refined applications. The CV style carburetor, the variable Venturi carburetor, is always moving in response internally. The slide valve and the metering rod is always moving in response to fuel demand or to engine demand. All right, both slide valve and CV carburetors have a slide that moves up and down in a bore, and at the bottom of the slide is a metering rod. And I'm gonna show you the metering rod in a second. Slide valve, you open the throttle, it pulls up on the cable, pulls up on the slide, pulls the metering rod out of the jet, increases fuel flow. On a CV style carburetor, it's using vacuum created by the velocity of air passing under the slide valve. So, CV carburetor, I guess is always, it will always have a, a smooth domed top. A CV style carburetor is always gonna have this spring, which is an important element in the overall tuning of the carburetor. Now, just you know, to make a comparison, a slide valve carburetor will also have a spring up here, but it serves a different purpose. The slide valve carburetor's spring up there is just to return the slide valve and the metering rod to its at rest position. So you open the throttle, it pulls it up against the spring, you close the throttle, the spring shuts it. On a CV carburetor, this thing is always in motion. This is an actual tuning device. So the way it works is, a CV, a CV style carburetor is going to have a throttle blade, just like a regular conventional downdraft style carburetor, but there's no direct connection between here and fuel flow. What happens is, as you open the throttle, air is pulled from the inlet into the engine, and as it passes underneath the slide, and we pull the slide out, and there's the metering rod. You see it's tapered like that. The further out this goes, the skinnier it gets, and the more fuel is allowed to flow into the engine. At the bottom of the slide, you'll see two holes. There's a, a big one at the top and a smaller one at the bottom. And the size of those holes also is a tuning variable. So the spring 
and those holes dictate how much vacuum the diaphragm is going to see. The air passing through the, the, the slide valve here is, is open, okay? So the air passing underneath sees those holes, creates a vacuum here against this diaphragm. The diaphragm works against the spring and that vacuum is allowed to pull the metering rod up and out just far enough to give it as much fuel as it needs. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. That's one of the problems with making videos like this, is that you, you're explaining stuff, but you're not really sure if you explained it correctly, so you can't say, did you get that? And then they, and then whoever's watching it can say, oh yeah, but what about the part that does this? Or, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I explained it correctly. One more time, okay? Inlet facing the engine, or outlet I should say, facing the engine, inlet facing the air cleaner. You open the throttle. When you open the throttle, air passes underneath this slide valve, which is hollow, acts on those two holes that are at the bottom, creates a vacuum in this diaphragm, with this diaphragm and the cover, and works against this spring. So high vacuum in the diaphragm works against the spring, pulls the valve pulls the needle valve way out and then low vacuum lets it settle in so it's always constantly metering fuel demand based on velocity underneath the uh, okay mm, we got it all right now the constant velocity or variable venturi carburetor is the most efficient way to meter fuel via carburation because it's completely demand based and it's always in action you'll get your best performance out of a properly tuned, properly set up CV carburetor. But there's a catch to all of that goodness and all of that efficiency. And that's that unlike other types of carburetors that have mechanical connection between, let's say, throttle position and fuel flow, because you're dealing with vacuum working against the spring and the diaphragm, because you're dealing with vacuum, CV type carburetors are sensitive to airflow on the filter side of things, right? So basically, let's say the filter becomes dirty, or it becomes not clogged, but dirtier, and it's harder to pull air through. What will happen is you'll have more vacuum operating against the diaphragm and against the spring, and it'll come up higher and feed it even more fuel. It becomes inefficient fat. And then there's a flip side. Let's say there's no restriction on the intake side. Well, then the spring pressure is too much. You don't have enough pull against the diaphragm here. And because you don't have enough pull, enough vacuum, this spring is going to keep the needle valve from pulling out far enough to give the engine enough fuel. All right. And that leads us to the oddball drivability problem that we came across just yesterday. So here's what happened. I've been looking for a cheap you know, just, just a, a scooter, a moped, something small and light that I could throw in the back of the trailer when we go someplace so, you know, we have easy transportation. So I've been watching Marketplace for a deal. And the other day, one pops up. It's a 2003 Honda Metropolitan. Cool little bike, styled after a Vespa. So it's got a 49cc single cylinder engine, and it's got a little tiny... 18 millimeter constant velocity carburetor. It's a little jewel, right? So in the listing, the guy said it ran. So okay, I go out there and I look at it and it fires right up and it idles perfectly and you give it a little throttle and it responds great. But you go like more than quarter to a half throttle and it's just flat, it doesn't want to accelerate, right? Top speed on it is 10 miles an hour. So, but it, it runs great. But it gives you the feeling that this fuel starvation above, let's say, 10 miles an hour, that's it, it's maxed out. It should be able to go 30, 35. So, they fired, they tried everything, they fired the parts cannon at it. It has a new carburetor. It has a new fuel filter. It has a new fuel pump. It has a new coil. They tried everything. And they couldn't get this thing to operate at more than 10 miles an hour. So, I ended up buying this thing for 250 bucks. I had a hunch of what was wrong with it because I came across a very similar problem, I came across the same problem with a Ruckus, a Honda Ruckus. Same thing, different body, but same engine, same carburetor, same everything. 
came across this problem before, so I kind of knew what to look for, and I was right. So, here's what happens, all right? As I said, the spring, the constant velocity carburetor is sensitive to the inlet tract. So, when the carburetor is tuned from the factory, they're taking the, the diameter of the intake runner, the, the, the ducting between the carburetor and the air filter, the length, the diameter, turns that are involved, and then of course the restriction of the air filter itself. With all of those factors, you know how much vacuum is going to be seen, right, as, as, as it's being pulled, as the fuel, as the air is being pulled under the slide valve, you can calculate how much vacuum it's going to see and how high it's going to raise, how far it's going to fight against the spring. So if there's a lot of resistance, you'll see high vacuum here and you'll see a lot of needle showing or a lot of needle pulled out of the jet. It'll flow a lot of fuel. But what if there's a vacuum leak? And that's what we had here. We had a vacuum leak on the inlet side. We're trained, we automatically think vacuum leak is going to be between the carburetor and the engine. But no, on a CV carburetor, the vacuum leak can be between the carburetor and the air filter. So, like I said, I came across this problem before, and if I hadn't, it would have taken me a little bit longer to figure it out. But here's what happened, okay? So here's the air filter. It, it's a dirty air filter, but it's not dirty enough to really make a difference. You can still see light through it. And here's the housing that it fits into. And this rectangular box right here is supposed to seal against a rubber flange around the outside of the filter. Well, this is made of a flimsy sort of rubber, like a cheap rubber. And so over time it warps. And that's what happened here. You can see if you look around the box, the flange here, you can see where it's all distorted and warped. Well, what happened was, this was no longer sealing against the air box. So instead of the filter creating the restriction that the carburetor was tuned for, there was no restriction at all. And because there was no restriction at all, this spring was too heavy. And so the metering rod never pulled far enough out of the jet to feed the engine the, the fuel that it needed. It gave all of the indications of a fuel starvation problem, but it had nothing to do with the fuel being delivered to the carburetor. It had to do with fuel flowing through the carburetor based on the tuning of this spring. So, just to check myself now, I put it back together again. I put the filter back into the housing like so, and then wherever it was warped, like right here you can see where it was warped, I just took some black RTV, smeared it on there, let it sit, then I put the assembly back on, fired it up, ran perfect, and now 30 miles an hour without batting an eye. It should go a little bit faster. It should be like a 35 mile an hour scooter, 35, 40 miles an hour. Right now it's maxing out at 30 and it feels like it's holding back a little bit. And I, I just did this as a quick fix just to test it, just to make sure that that was gonna be the problem. So my little bit of silicone around the warped housing sealed up the majority of the vacuum leak and returned balance between what the engine was pulling through the silencer, the, the air box over here and the filter and what the spring is rated for. Now what I'll do is I'll put a new filter in here and when I put the new filter in, I'll completely surround it with RTV, with black RTV to make up for any gaps due to this warpage and that is it, it's fixed. Uh, although the alternative could be just go to Honda and buy a new cover for it, but where's the sport in that? I'll just use some RTV. So that's the long and the short of it. Constant velocity carburetors are fantastically efficient. They're awesome carburetors, but they're sensitive to things that other carburetors aren't. And you'll find this, you'll find like if you, uh, if you have a motorcycle with CV carburetors and you change, let's say you get rid of the, the air box and the silencer and you go to low restriction filters, you'll find now that this thing is lean on the top end. It'll pull great down low, it'll feel right, but at the higher end it'll start to lean out. And that's because the spring, the spring pressure is tuned for a certain amount of resistance in the intake tract and if it doesn't see that resistance, that spring doesn't allow the needle to pull out far enough and feed it the fuel that it needs. A lot of people will mistakenly just put a bigger jet in it, figuring, well, it, that's how we get it, more fuel. But it doesn't work like that. The, the needle doesn't actually go into the jet. The needle goes into the jet housing. 
and because it's the housing, you can jet it to the moon. The tapered part of the needle isn't coming out far enough from the housing to allow that kind of fuel flow. So a low restriction, if you end up with a, with a uh, you, like I said, you eliminate the air box, you put low restriction filters on a CV carburetor and now it's lean, your solution is to get a, 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 a lighter spring for the diaphragm. Yeah, that should fix it. it. Like I said, this type of thing will drive you out of your mind unless you understand specifically how those carburetors work. And when they work correctly, there's nothing better. Yeah, some could say electronic fuel injection, but I'm a carburetor guy, so I'm going to stick with there's nothing better. All right, I hope you got something out of that. I'm going to go ride my scooter around for a little bit. I'll see you tomorrow.